Welcome back to Operation Self Reset, episode 167. Here we go now. <laughs> something or uh, like you know start break dancing in your car because i know a lot of you guys are listening to this in the vehicle and i just want to say thank you i love you i appreciate you awesome intro from my buddy dj cineron now cineron is the brother of jordan hart jordan hart was on the podcast oh boy many many moons ago uh, he was one of the original interviews uh, for the show. Um, he is a graphic designer. He lives out in L.A. We're talking about Jordan Hart now. Uh, he's an author, and he's doing some really creative stuff. And in the future here, I am going to have him back on for a part two to see where he's at. Um, but his brother um, is a DJ, and he <laughs> creates pretty awesome music. And when I found out about his skills, I was like, man, I got a perfect job for you. Create something freaking awesome for this podcast. And I think he knocked it out of the park. Just a little taste for you guys just to get fired up and to really just get the blood flowing. Because when it comes to learning and growing and becoming more, you need to do something to kind of rattle the cage. We pair this with some awesome music. We pair this with screaming, I'm freaking awesome. You got a new person, pretty much. I mean, it's like, wham, bam, thank you, man. Ma'am, it's like the easy bake oven, right? Like three ingredients, slide it into a little oven with a light bulb, wait 10 minutes, ding, you're good to go. Or in this case, half an hour, 45 minutes, whatever, how long these podcasts usually take. So with that being said, if you guys want to check out DJ Cineron, head on over to iTunes and just type in C-I-N-N-A-R-O-N, Cineron, um, awesome, awesome guy. And of course, he made the music custom for this show. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt, but today's show is brought to you by StoryWorth. Please visit storyworth.com forward slash reset to save $20 when you subscribe. StoryWorth is an awesome company that captures great stories from loved ones and puts it into a book for you to enjoy for years to come. Head on over to storyworth.com forward slash reset for $20 off. Some of you may be into techno music or house music, whatever, electronic music. I think that's the technical name for for uh, the intro music and the music that DJ Cineron produces. And some of you may not. And regardless of what your style preference is, I think we can all agree that music connects with us in a certain way and makes us feel really good. And so in those moments when we need to kind of shake it up and kind of break out of ourselves, I think something really energizing and and something with good beat and something that can really awaken our senses is needed, especially in today's day and age. And so I feel it's fitting. If you're not a fan of it, well, I appreciate, um, you know, I would appreciate some feedback. How can we change it up? How can we make me make it better? And some of you guys are probably thinking, well, I would like a longer intro, Jake. I mean, maybe play the whole song. And I think maybe in the future, but for now, it's time to get to business because if we keep on just listening to music all the time, then we just become a product of music and we don't become a product of becoming absolutely freaking awesome. So today we're going to be talking about limiting beliefs and how do we bash them and tread them for 2017 so we, we, we can become absolutely freaking awesome. Now, before we get into that, we're going to embrace what we do best, and that is the awesome sauce. Awesome sauce is where we stand in a position of power. If you're driving right now, this is where you tense your body up and you squeeze that steering wheel like you're going to break it off of the, the, the drive shaft and throw it out the window. And this is where we scream on the top of our lungs, I'm freaking awesome, not because... Well, I'm cocky and arrogant. It's because you absolutely are freaking awesome, but you choose not to embrace it as much as you really should. And it's about time we shake the cage. We rattle the cage. We get comfortable with the uncomfortable, and we do something different. And you may be a parent, or you may be an older generation person that's listening to this stuff for the first time. You're thinking... Well, Jake, I, uh, I got some grandchildren and some kids of myself that could really embrace the I'm freaking awesome. I'll tell them about it, but I'm not going to do it with you. <laughs> I guess that was my Santa impersonation. <laughs> 
Um, I just want to say, look, people, let's be serious here. We, we we're trying to do something different. We're trying to get out of the way of ourselves. We're trying to learn some awesome stuff. We're trying to bash uh, the, the person we were to be, become the person we are today. And it's about time. Just scream it with me. That's all, I, that's all I'm asking. Like a Christmas miracle. St. Nick is coming up here shortly. Just just tickle me pink here and scream I'm freaking awesome just for my personal enjoyment. Because I know the benefit that you're going to get out of it. I know it sounds so weird and crazy and cynical. And I don't even know if that's the right word to use with this. But regardless, it's about time we stand up for ourselves, right? It's it, we, Man, it's it, ugh, these years keep going by and we're not making progress. And we're doing the same thing over and over again. And we keep watching the same show. And we, we're, we're not reaching our full potential and all that junk. You know why? Is because we don't do anything different. We're in the cog of the machine of life of the same habits, the same routines, but it's about time that we embrace our new self. We embrace that little engine that could that's inside all of us. I think I can, I think I can, but our engine is screaming, I'm freaking awesome, I'm freaking awesome, I'm freaking awesome. Actually, that's a really good idea for a children's book um, right there. Hmm, interesting. Instead of I think I can, I'm freaking awesome. But what could it be instead of a train? Because I just want to copy a train. All right. All right. Okay, okay. So anyway, sorry about my daydreaming of entrepreneur uh, mindset. So let's do it. You're sitting in your car. Lock those elbows. Squeeze that steering wheel. Tense up those thighs. G- get that blood pumping in your body. If you are able to stand, if you are working out right now, act like you're stretching and put your arms overhead Stretch those arms up to the sky like you're reaching for that bar that's just a couple of inches above. And I want you to lift your chin up. Try to get some great air, great breaths inside of you. And I want you to scream at the top of your lungs that you are freaking awesome. So we're going to say, I'm freaking awesome on the count of three. Please join me. Here we go. One, two, three. I'm freaking awesome. Yeah. Man, I just want to break something, right? You know, you just feel like you want to punch your arm through, like, drywall, but then you accidentally hit the stud, and so your arm only breaks the drywall, like, a little bit, and yet you actually break your hand. But it's not about that. Like, you just get invigorated, and you get tensed up, and you feel really good. It feels good to kind of just, uh, you know, get that, I don't say aggression and anger, because there's real no need to, to fight that anger out. You know, you're not trying to push anything out. You're just trying to awaken the beast inside of you. As Tony Robbins has wrote on the cover of his book, Awaken the Giant Within, um, I think that there's a lot of, lot of value right there. So let's dive into the concepts of t- for today of limiting, limiting beliefs. And there's two sides of this coin. And as you know, last time, I, I think I kind of lied. Last week I said I'm not going to bring this up again, but I'm going to talk about Self Reset Mastery. It's my goal program for 2017. Um, it's a 100-day program that I transformed into a all-year-long program. It's $495. It includes some awesome bonuses, two free tickets to my event in September. It allows access of great interviews. And also, of course, we're going to be doing some in-depth information when it comes to personal development. Now, the reason why I lace these two together is because of this. The topics that I'm going to be talking about in 2017 with this elite mastermind group, Self Reset Mastery, um, a lot of them are ideas and things we all know we should improve upon, but for some odd reason, we just don't think we can. For some odd reason, we just don't feel it. So for some odd reason, we're not able to, to push through the barriers. Now, it doesn't matter what type of information I share with you guys on this podcast. It doesn't really matter the information that you learn online or read in the blogs because it's all good to know information. We all get it, right? Set better habits. Have better productivity. Think positive. Um, <laughs> let me put up my list of all the things we're going to talk about. And I'm kind of making fun of myself because, I, look, let's be serious. When it comes to personal development, there's only there, there's a lot of new ideas, but there's also a lot of traditional ideas. Like a traditional idea is goal setting, right? Oh, my gosh, you got to set a goal for 2017. What is it you want to accomplish? What do you want to be? Where do you want to go? What is it we want to do? All those great things. But the unique thing is a lot of these habits and routines, and I think the reason why you're here is because we all know we need to keep on improving them. We need to keep on getting better with them because we're not making that progress, right? That's why we're here. If you made progress, if you listen to one of these episodes, you'd be like, Jake, man, woo, 
I got it, dude. I'm freaking awesome. I'm the best person ever in the world. The great thing, though, about personal development, it, it humble makes you humble, humbleizes. I don't even know that's a word. It makes you humble. Because when you do feel invigorated, and maybe some of you guys are, are touched right now and invigorated and going, man, I really, I really dig this podcast. This podcast really makes me feel good. And you drive to work, you park your car, you get out of your car, you start walk, walking to work, and then the chaos of the job comes on in, and that feeling that you had in the vehicle dissipates. And so you need me back in your life. And I'm not just saying me, Jake Naraki. I'm saying you need the reminder of all these great ideas because life gets in the way. Life pushes us off track. Life bumps us a little bit. And when you get bumped on the ice skates of life, woo! sometimes you fall and wipe out and spin into the boards. Sometimes you get off balance and shake you on your legs, but you catch yourself and you get back on course. And the way we get back on course or the way that we get up if we get knocked down is truly to re- realize these ideas and, and, and tips. And so these are a couple of the, the ideas, which are classic in a way, but yet very powerful in their own regard. And they deal with limiting beliefs only because a lot of you, after I read these topics, you're going to think, yep, I could use more of that in my life. Oh. Nope, there's no way I can improve that. Yeah, that one resonates with me. Ooh, that one, oosh. Uh, I'm not that type of person. I'm not a good leader, whatever the case may be. So let's go through them. I got 16 of them for you. So let's talk about number one, which I think is maybe one of the most important, is leadership basics. Now, I work for the Milwaukee Fire Department. I'm a lieutenant. I, I, I tell people to do some really good things. And then also, too, I do some silly things where I go, man, that was a really bad call. And instead of just being a good leader of other people, I think absolutely you have to be a great leader of your, yourself. Because, for example, if uh, we have a fire and I am out of shape, for example, I'm out of shape, but yet I have all the tactical mindset and I have all the ways to put out this fire, but yet I can't get my butt to the back door to mask up, to go on into that environment, to hump the hose, to pull out the, the people that are trapped. If I don't have that physical ability, am I really a good leader, even though I have the mind for it? Of course not. There's absolutely no way. People are not going to respect me. They'll know that I'm quote unquote book smart or they know that I know the tactics, but when it comes down to it, I'm going to be a horrible, horrible boss. And so when you think in that mindset, it makes you realize that, you know what? Leadership really starts with yourself. To be a good leader, you need to really make sure that you have all your ducks in order, that you're doing everything that you can to lead yourself towards victory. It'd be easy for me to tell people, hey, you know what? Tuck in your shirt. Shave your, your face, you know, you know, get black socks on instead of the white socks. But yet I'm a sloppy guy. I got food all over myself, you know, shirts untucked. Yeah, I'm not a good representation. And we all get that. We all understand that. So I'm not going to get into details on, you know, when it comes to leadership. But leadership is truly one of those things to remind ourselves that, you know what? You need to be self-directed. You need to get yourself in gear. You need to be the person that wakes up early. Now, some of you are thinking, well, Jake, you know what? I feel like I'm a pretty good leader. And others of you right now are thinking, man, I stink at being a leader myself. I have no control over my habits. I have no control over my willpower. I have no control over the things that I think about. And I'm always thinking negative every single day. So what's the answer? Limiting beliefs limit us. They automatically sneak into our life and they tell us the story before it even happens. And I'll be honest, one of the things I struggle with is if I want to make this business a booming business, if I want to affect millions of people, 20 million people, that's a goal that I have. I want to reach 20 million people. What do I need to do? Well, I need to be very, very organized. And you know what the first thing that comes into my mind when I think of being organized with paperwork and, and emails and all that stuff is I, I think I, I don't think I can do it. It's not me. That's not the way I was raised. I, I, you know, I'm a paperwork all over the place, you know, notes galore, all that stuff. I'm just not that type of person. I need to outsource that. And I think there's two, two coins to that, two sides of the coin. Number one, I think it's really good to understand your strengths and weaknesses. Good, good, good job. Jake, I'm just using myself as an example because I don't know what your, your limiting beliefs are. But when I think of that, I think, okay, I got to outsource. Cool. That's a great idea. But also too, I also have the negative mindset of there's no way that I can do this by myself. That there's no way that Jay can be organized enough to grow the business to where I want to go. So I think to myself, well, I can't do it. 
And if I don't have that other person, if I can't outsource this or if I can't get a partner or somebody on board to help me, then I'm not going to succeed. And a lot of us think like that. A lot of us hear an idea. We, we realize a strategy. We realize that thing that we should be more of. And then we automatically think like, oh, there's no way I can do that. From weight loss to having a relationship that we actually love that person every single day to living debt free. Our finances are, are just dialed in to starting a business from scratch and knowing that it's going to be successful. All these ideas are really good, but if you have that limiting belief that absolutely stands in your way, well, then, then it's all over with. Because it doesn't matter how much we listen to awesome dance music. It doesn't matter how much we, we scream, I'm freaking awesome. It doesn't really matter all of those things. And so we need to make sure, how do we bash those limiting beliefs? Before we start talking about limiting beliefs, I want to talk to you about today's sponsor, StoryWorth. Now, if you're looking for a last-minute gift for someone that you love, listen in. StoryWorth was founded by a guy who wanted to capture his dad's amazing stories. And in the process, he knew that other people could utilize this service to make sure that people's loved ones' memories, stories, ideas were captured in a hard-covered book. Now, how it works is this. You purchase a subscription for someone you love, and each week, StoryWorth sends them an email with questions about their life. And the loved one can simply reply to the email with their story, or they can record it over the phone by calling the number to StoryWorth. All the stories are private and only shared with family that you choose. After one year, their stories will be bound into a beautiful keepsake book. Now, a couple of key features is this. You got one year of awesome questions to collect unique stories to remember this loved one about. It's a hardcover printed book, up to 500 pages. You can write stories and upload photos by email on the web or on the app, and you can invite an unlimited number of people to receive the stories. The great part is it's a gift for the holidays for your loved one who will enjoy telling their stories and also, too, to pass on the memories of those individuals that you care for so deeply. So if you're interested in a unique way to share somebody's life, head on over to storyworth.com forward slash reset, get yourself $20 off, and literally capture somebody's life through a whole year of unique questions and stories and memories, and they put it into a book that you can hold on to and pass on through the generations. A unique idea, truly. Um, I think there's a couple of people in my family that I'm going to give this to uh, for the holidays for, 27, for 2016, not 2017. But um, I think it's a cool idea. And, and so if you're looking for a unique gift, this may be something to look into, especially for individuals that have a life to talk about. Again, head on over to storyworth.com forward slash reset, R-E-S-E-T, to get yourself $20 off. Now, let's talk about limiting beliefs. So to bash these limiting beliefs, I have this thing called the four C's. The four C's. C's to the fourth degrees. That was kind of like my rap. Um, and before I kind of get into the four C's, I just want to talk about takeaways. And I realize the importance of making sure that I identify what are the takeaways? What are the key principles of podcasts? Because look, you're driving your car, you're probably texting, which you shouldn't do, or checking email if you're jogging or you're riding your bike or you're exercising or whatever the case may be. Sometimes you're not able to catch the real information that is going on within the podcast. So I'm trying better. I'm going to try to become a better presenter and then really identify the certain takeaways in each podcast. So here they are for today. As we all know, we learn in systems, you know, like three steps or, you know, 10 pillars, whatever the case may be. So today we're going to be talking about four C's. The four C's are this. Okay, ready, everybody? Because I guess I'm now like a teacher in a classroom setting. Sit down. Hey, Billy. Yeah, I'm no, no, put down that paper. No, you cannot throw it. That was my reenactment if I was a teacher t yelling at Billy. Um, if your name's Billy, I apologize. I was just trying to be in the moment there, act it out, do a little gestures. But anyway, here are the four C's. Number one, we're going to catch it. We're going to cover it. We're going to challenge it. And we're going to conquer it. Okay, again, it's catch as number one. Number two is cover. 
Number three is challenge. And number four is conquer. All right, so how does this relate? Jake, give me, give me a backstory here. How can I put this into my life right now, buddy? Come on now. All right, so let's say, for example, you're at work. The day is going really good. Like you're having a good day. Like you just listened to Operation Self Reset. Your life is like on the way of becoming freaking awesome. You go to lunch with some buddies and, and some some friends from work and you had some good times. And you're thinking, oh man, dude, today I'm just going to crush it for the last couple hours of work. I'm going to go home, have an awesome meal, play with the kids, watch some TV with my hubby or loved one, and go to bed early because I understand the importance of sleep. Okay? You're thinking, wow, I'm going to crush it today. Then at like 2.30 in the afternoon, your boss or superior officer or manager or whoever the heck you you are below um, says, oh, hey, Jake, we got this huge project and we need you to finalize it. Can you just go over the numbers? Can you look at everything and make sure that it all lines up? We need that before you end work today. And if you're not able to finish it about by 5 o'clock, you're going to have to bring it home and email the re me the results because we really need it by tonight. Thank you so much. We'll see you later. And you're thinking, what the? Inside, internally. Because let's be serious. If you're a professional in a professional setting, you can't just go irate and go postal. Okay, postal, by the way, is probably a bad term to use. Um, but you just can't freak out on people, right? So what's the first thing that we need to do? Well, we need to catch that limiting belief. The limiting belief in that scenario is that you don't have the time, the energy, the resources, um, the ability to dedicate yourself because, quote, unquote, you're already checked out. Quote, unquote, you've already kind of given up on the day and you're already looking forward to the evening with family and your kids or a good meal or good sleep. And now the limiting belief is, is there's no way I can do this. And now I am teed off. I'm really, really angry. So in those moments, that's kind of a limiting belief. And you may be thinking, well, that's not really a limiting belief. I mean, because you're able to accomplish it. You know, a limiting belief is something. Okay, all right, all right. But a limiting belief in the real world, because a lot of these things in the personal development space kind of get wrapped into like, you know, I think I can or I think I can't. No, no, no. Because the real world is this. When our mind changes focus from something really freaking awesome to something really negative, that's a limiting belief right there. And the limiting belief in this example, again, is not having the time, the energy, the resources, and you're going to stay up late, and you're going to be teed off and all that stuff. And in those moments when that happens, when we get that switch, when we get that gut-turning feeling, when we get that hot flash, when we get that wave of emotion, we need to catch it. Catching it as being just basically what I talk about all the time, self-aware. Self-awareness, I... Do, Stop what you're doing right now. Self, being self-aware is the number one principle of becoming a better individual. The number one principle in personal development. If you are not aware of the stuff that you are doing every single day, then then what you're listening to right now is 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 going in one ear and out the other. Because if you're not aware of what you're putting in your mouth or how that you sleep or what you're reading or who you're talking to, all that stuff, if you're not aware about that, you're never going to get to that next level. You're never going to lift your standards up. And so we need to make sure that we catch when our mind, our body goes out of whack and it goes from positive to negative. We need to catch that and be aware. So you're thinking, okay, Jake, all right, I got it. I, I'm really teed off right now. Well, what, what do I do to, to get over this? How do we bash these limiting beliefs? The second is to cover it. Now, in the military, in the fire service, in any service or job or industry, when somebody, a coworker, goes down or a family friend, what do we do? We try to help them out and we try to cover for them. In the military, they, you know, you got my six. In the fire department, we got two in, two out. In the police department, they got your back. All those different keywords, we understand it. How do we cover our limiting beliefs? We cover it by switching our mindset back to that positive. Taking a deep breath, we already identified and catched what our, our, the problem is. You're really teed off. Now we need to cover it with positive stuff. And this is where you kind of have to force yourself into it. You know how I talk about, you know, you can't feel your life, way through life. Like nobody ever feels like waking up at 4 a.m. to read a book on personal development. Nobody feels like waking up at 4 a.m. to go work out. So the same applies to this. We need to cover that limiting belief and force ourselves force ourselves to think positive. Okay, what is the good that can come out of this? And I know what you're thinking right now, Jake, this is BS, dude. There's no way that I can change myself in, in that short of amount of time or to make myself believe that it's going to turn out and be okay. Well, what choice do you have? 
you have two choices in that moment. Number one, you stay where you're at, as in being pissed off and angry and, and frustrated and just annoyed. Or you have the ability to force yourself and thinking, okay, what's the good that can come out of this? <sighs> I'm really not happy right now, but how do I turn this into my favor? And so you try to now search within your brain, your gourd, and try to think, how can you cover it, change it positively? And so the way we do that is the third C, and that is challenge. The third C is challenge. So we got catch, which is the first. We got cover is the second. And the third is challenge. We challenge ourselves. You and I are competitive individuals, and you may be thinking, Jake, I never competed in my life. I have no competition edge. I, uh, I'm actually not really good at anything, so is this a competition like a game? No, no, no. You're challenging yourself now. You're forcing yourself to look at it in, quote, unquote, a game. Because for some odd reason, us people, us humans, love to try to reach and become victorious. We love to win, right? I mean, it's kind of built within us. If we're going to try for something, we want to achieve. That's why all of us set goals in 2017. That's why we all set goals in the first of the year. We all try to win. We all try to win at life. You get a job because you want to win. You want to be you want to be on the beach. You want to dr be drinking the margaritas. That's winning. If, if you want to win in your diet, you try to lose the 15 pounds so you could win. So you can kind of, you know, beat yourself up and, and become victorious. And so the way that we beat these limiting beliefs is that we challenge ourselves. We have this little competition and saying, all right, I, I bet you I can do this. I bet you I can knock it out before 5 p.m. I bet you that I can challenge myself right now that eh, I'll get it done. You know, at 6.30, I'll be able to go home and have dinner and maybe I can break away for half an hour and I can knock this sucker out. And so what we're doing in that process of the challenge is that we're focusing on something else now. And in the process of the cover, which is step number two, kind of reverting a little bit, in covering, we're, we're identifying, okay, we need to think positive. And now in the challenge, we are in the process of thinking positive. So that's the action step of the challenge. Because now we're forcing ourselves to think, think outside of that, to think beyond that limiting belief, and to try to challenge ourselves to win, to become victorious. And the last is, the fourth is to conquer it. Through the process of challenging ourselves, of going through the next couple of hours, the four or five hours or eight hours to finish the project, to get it emailed back in time, we need to conquer it. We, that's where we strive to quote unquote win. Those are the four C's to limiting beliefs. Now this can apply to anything. Like in the example I used earlier with my productivity or organizational skills, when I know that if I want to succeed in this business, I need to be very organized. When I think about that, I get really negative and I go, well, I'm not that type of person. I am who I am. My parents aren't very organized. There's no way I can be organized too because I have the same DNA genes as my father. And I'm not talking about Lee's or Denim's or the seven genes, which are like $300. I'm talking about like DNA genes. And so in those moments, I first need to identify, Jake, what the heck are you doing? Stop thinking like that. Number one, I'm catching it. The second thing is, Number two is to cover, right? So I'm covering it. I'm going, okay, man, whew, look, all right, yeah, you're right. You know what? I don't have the best circumstances. I don't have the best uh, guidance. I don't have the best people in my life uh, to go off of when it comes to organization, but I know that I want this so bad that I'm willing to figure out how, how to get past this. What do I need to do? And then third, that's where the challenge comes on in. That's where the plan comes on in. The plan of action to understand, okay, I really stink at organization. What should I do? Should I outsource? Should I start reading books? Should I start educating myself? Should I become a master of organization? And then the fourth is to conquer it. To go, okay, I'm going to read three books. I'm going to read a book from the 1900s on organizational skills. I'm going to read a book that is absolutely like the fundamentals, like the kind of the 101 on organizational skills. I'm going to find it on Amazon, like this one that has like 10,000 reviews. And then I'm going to find a book that is futuristic. It's the future of organization. It's all the new techie and trends and all that stuff. And I'm going to read those three books, and I'm going to melt together a foundation, a framework that is absolutely going to make me a master, and I'm going to conquer organization. And you may be sitting there going, <laughs> you got to be kidding me, man. I don't have time to read the books. You know who I am? I got 19 kids. I'm, I'm in debt up to my eyeballs. We're going to Disney World. <laughs> yeah, speaking of debt, you're going to go to in debt when you go to Disney World. Sidestep, um, my sister is going to Disney World. Holy guacamoles, that place is a vacuum of the wallets. 
Um, I'm looking forward to going to Disney, but my gosh, it is going to be challenging not to go into debt for that. But anyway, so you may be thinking, Jake, I, I don't have the time or the availability to conquer those limiting beliefs. Well, we're going to go back to the fundamentals of personal development. That is, you have two options in your life. You stay the same or you challenge yourself and try to conquer the stuff that you absolutely stink at. And that is why I think, this is my belief, see, I'm kind of bringing it back around now. This is my sales pitch. You, you should join the Self Reset Mastery Program because for once and for all, you're going to set aside time on those things that you absolutely stink at. And if you have limiting beliefs on these topics, which are the topics that I was going to talk about earlier, um, they are this, I'm stalling, I'm trying to look for it. Here they are. Leadership basics, we talked about that. Self-care and nutrition, how to learn. Yeah, we need to figure out how to learn so we can absorb the information. Now, these are topics, so bear with me here. Um, the uh, one, two, three, the fourth is how not to be perfect and still be freaking awesome because being a perfectionist is absolutely a disease and a lot of us are not moving forward because we feel we have to be perfect in that realm and it's about time we stop that. So that's a topic I'm going to be talking about. The fifth is to take control of anxiety or to crush and to crush depression. I am not, I don't have anxiety. Um, I think once in a while I do have depression, but I'm not a doctor. I'm not, a, I don't take medication for it. There's a lot of people that listen to this podcast that do have those ailments and it's my duty to help you through those moments. And you know what? I think all of us can say at some point in our lives, we've had anxiety, we've worried up the wazoo, or we, we've we had the anxiety and, and we've had the depression moments when things weren't going our way. So it's about time we kind of figure that stuff out. Okay, that's number five. Number six is elite performance. What are the most successful people doing in the world? And how can we capture those habits and ideas, implement them into ourselves? Um, the seventh would be willpower. I don't even know if I'm counting right. Number eight is parenting 101. Again, if you're not a parent, there's still a huge value here because it deals with being an authority figure within your world. Um, the next would be sleep. The next would be business uh, starter class, giving you the business basics of business. The next would be purpose because if you don't have your purpose, you don't have direction in your life. The next would be confidence. The next would be impact of a uh, being the impact of being positive, trying to always be positive in the realm of the world. Um, the next is love. The next is habits, and the last is goals. Goals, and the reason why I put goals last is because Ricky Bobby has an awesome quote. Ricky Bobby is a character from Talladega Nights. Will Ferrell plays w Ricky Bobby. Bobby. It's a comedy movie. Uh, man, it's probably like five or eight years ago. Uh, it was made, and he states, uh, if you're not first, you're last. And because when it comes to goals, all of us just go, well, I just want to lose the weight. How do I just lose the weight? But we all understand when it comes to goal setting, there's actually so much more that goes into it. And when you try to lose the weight, you actually become so much more than just a person that has lost 15 pounds. In the process, you have changed your habits. In the process, you have built willpower. In the process, you've been getting better sleep. In the process, you created more love and confidence. And in the process, as you can see, all of these different ideas and topics that I'm going to be talking about in Self Reset Mastery 2017 are all related. They all link together. It's a daisy chain. It is a chain. It's a chain to, to make sure that every step of the way is covered because in the process of reaching our goals, it's more than just the end goal. It's about the person we become. And when we want to become somebody better, reach that thing, there are so many fundamental steps that you and I are lacking that we need to become masters of. And those limiting beliefs somehow, some way affected you when I said one of them. For, for maybe you, it is sleep. You think sleep. <laughs> Jake, dude, I got, I got a newborn. Uh, you know, I wake up at 3 a.m. I'm on third shift or you know, whatever. All the, the craziness of the world. I get it. And that's a limiting belief for you. For others, it may be love. If you think of Jake, dude, I, nobody loves me. Everybody hates me. Oh, I guess see it worms. Big, fat, juicy ones. Okay, no. All right. But anyway, beginning back to love, you may be thinking, Jake, I, there's no love in my life. There's nobody that loves me. I don't love anybody. My, I lost my parents. I lost my family members. Um, I got a divorce. My kids left me. All that stuff. There's no love for me to give. That's a limiting belief. These limiting beliefs pile up. And when you start to pile up these limiting beliefs, it's almost like plates on a, a bench press. 
and you keep on throwing on these big plates on a be bench press and you're underneath there trying to keep those those weights off of your throat or off of your chest so they don't kill you. And these limiting beliefs are heavy and they're a burden, but just think how good it would be if you could bash them, if you could eliminate them, if you could use the four C's and use them correctly in your life of catching it, being self-aware, of covering it, trying to be positive and to get your mind off of it. The third thing you do is to challenge it. And then once you challenge it, you conquer it. And it might seem easy, but the easy things to do are also easy not to do. This is actually complex. I wish I could work with you deeper on this stuff. And some of you need this on a deeper level. And that's why I created this program, Self Reset Mastery. So we can sit down. We can spend an hour on these four steps. We can spend an hour on confidence. We can spend an hour on love. We can spend an hour on sleep. We can spend an hour on leadership. This is not just for fun, fun stuff. This is absolutely information that all of us need. And so if you're not willing to invest in yourself and take the time needed, well, then keep listening to the podcast, of course, because it's going to help and there's some awesome content in here. But I just want to say that some of you need this more than you think. And it's about time maybe you make the investment on yourself for 2017. Just think how great it's going to feel December 31st of 2017 when you have a deeper understanding, when you understand the principles, when you can walk around this life with frameworks and uh, ideas that can assist you when things get tough. Because let's be serious, they're going to get tough. And I wish I was Mr. Positive 1000% and saying life, life doesn't get hard. Oh my God, life is horrible. Life is the hardest thing that all of us are doing every single day. Life is hard. There's bright moments. There's moments that we appreciate and we're grateful and we're crying, we're excited and happy. But of course, there's always moments in our life that absolutely drag us down to our knees, that absolutely step on our head when we are sinking in water. Even though we're, we're, we're screaming, I need help, I need help, and life comes along and steps on your head <laughs> and you're underwater. That's a very graphic image. Um, but it's the truth. And so if you're looking to get more on a deeper level, then join the program. SelfResetMastery.com forward slash B-U-Y. Buy it. You're listening to this. If you're listening to this on Wednesday, which is December 7th, I want you to know that today is the last day. That if you are one of the first of about 12,000 people uh, that are listening to this on December 7th, which is tomorrow, my time, my world as of right now, you have that day to make the decision if you want to join or not. If you are listening to this in the future, probably the doors are going to be closed. Um, you feel free to reach out to me and email me, but they're probably going to be closed. We're either going to hit the max of 40 people or we're just going to shut down the doors. The reasoning is not because I'm being mean and a jerk. It's just because there's too much movement on my side to wait until the last minute of December 31st, 2016 to just throw you into the mix. There's a lot of preparation needed and a lot of, uh, fundamental steps that, uh, need this course to happen for it to be successful. So with that being said, uh, that's all I have for the sales pitch of Self Reset Mastery. Um, if you want uh, more information, just go to selfresetmastery.com slash buy. Join 30-day money, money back guarantee. Uh, a lot of cool bonuses, a lot of free stuff. It's going to be great. So with that being said, let's get back to our limiting beliefs. And is this. Limiting beliefs affect all of us. If you feel that you are free of it, well, then you're doing a good job of catching it. You're doing a good job of covering it. You're a good job of challenging it. And you're doing a good job of conquering it. Because at some point, at somehow, some way, we have all go, we have all done these steps from looking at ourselves in the mirror and going, man, whoo, I put on a couple of extra pounds after that turkey dinner. Or man, whoo, I'm not, I'm really down in debt right now. And I am up to my eyeballs. I gotta, I gotta figure out a way to get out of this mess. Or you're thinking, whoo, man, my relationships are absolutely horrible. I gotta figure out a better way. I gotta start loving more people. How do I go about this? And in somehow, some way, you have used these. You, I, you caught it, you covered it, you challenged yourself to get out of it, and then you were victorious. You conquered it. Those are the four C's. So the, that, those are my takeaways for today. So that's all I really have. That's it, really. Um, now, before you turn me off, I just want to say thank you for listening to this podcast. And if you have any suggestions on how to make this podcast bigger and better, let me know. Um, 
I'm not saying this to be arrogant or cocky, but my show is within the top five or four percent of all podcasts in the whole world. And the reason why I know this is because advertisers and people are getting in contact with me and they're, you know, they're they're kind of pumping me up. And I keep on thinking, well, how do I become even better than where I'm at? Because the only way to affect those 20 million people are to absolutely get better. And what is it that I can do to enhance the show? Do you have any suggestions for me? I would love to hear them. If you have anything, if you if you listen to other podcasts and they go, oh, Jake, you know, they, they do X, Y, and Z. Maybe you could start doing that. That'd be really, really helpful. I'm looking for suggestions. I'm actually looking for your help. Just straight up. Uh, feel free to text me. My number is 414-550-4012. And also, too, I am building a new website, and I would love to see your video on my website. I'm looking for people to be screaming, I'm freaking awesome. Um, send that video to my cell phone, 414-550-4012, and you will be placed in a collage of other about 25, uh, 28 individuals that have already sent me a video of them screaming, I'm freaking awesome. Uh, Look, it it would be awesome. I I really believe that the power of screaming this, I really believe more people need to see it, and I believe that if other people see actual people like yourself, in your car, at the gym, in your house, on the Golden Gate Bridge, on the Great Wall of China, at the and the uh, Australia Opera House. If more people see that, then they'll believe too. And the more people that we have believed, the more impact that we can create together. I appreciate you. I thank you. Um, and also too, the last thing I would like you to do, if there isn't any more, is this. To share this podcast with a friend, with a loved person, with somebody that you know that needs a little bit of awesome sauce in their own personal life. Life is hard. Life is challenging. A lot of us want to achieve great things. And I know that there's friends of yours, family members of yours that could use this. All I'm asking is for you to reach out to them and to share it or to make a suggestion. And hopefully I can do the rest and and, uh, pull them over to the good side. So with that being said, I appreciate you. I thank you. And uh, we'll talk to you guys next week for another great episode of Operation Self-Reset. Stay and be freaking awesome. We'll see ya.